Hi everyone, Blue Thinny Fanister here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Lana Del Rey album, Blue Bannisters. This is the latest full-length LP from Miss Lana Del Rey, her eighth album overall, and her second this year, in fact. Really feels like she's been on a creatively prolific streak since the release of Norman fucking Rockwell a few years ago. Great album, my favorite Lana record to date, and even though the following chemtrails over the country Club this past March wasn't nearly as impressive, it still showed Lana pushing some boundaries vocally and lyrically. And I also think Blue Bannister sees Lana experimenting outside of her commercial bag. Lyrically, on the title track, she writes in more of a diaristic fashion with some free associative poetry that pieces together sections of a larger picture of this hole in her heart in a broken promise from a man she loved uh, saying that he'd be here to do this, to do that. And of course she's doing this over these distant pianos and ambient synth beds. Whole thing sounds like a dream. There is an interlude in the track list that is uh, just a straight trap beat that I guess samples uh, Ennio Morricone. Arcadia has these faint string sections and mariachi horns playing in the background of the track that gives it a subtle surreal quality. Uh, these sounds are sort of there, but sort of not. Not to mention Lana's vocal delivery and melodies on that song have the trappings of a musical theater piece. There's also the schmaltzy jazz horn outro on If You Lie Down With Me. Lana can also be heard yelling her brains out at the end of Living Legend with all this distortion on her voice as if she's mimicking the sound of a guitar. There are a few cuts where she experiments with song structure a bit, a few more where she crosses over with Alex Turner and Miles Kane. Yes, that Alex Turner and Miles Kane. So yeah, while Blue Bannisters is a varied album, it's also a record that sticks mostly to that stark presentation of vocals and pianos that has defined Lana's past couple of records, which, which I think has been a tasteful shift for her. But look, on paper, I feel like I should at the very least be enjoying this record as much as chemtrails, but that just wasn't the case. Because Blue Bannisters is honestly an unwieldy mess, uh, one of Lana's most inconsistent projects in a while. Cause there are loads of moments on this thing where I just have no idea what the hell she's doing. Like the refrain on Beautiful toward the end sounds like something out of a bad jewelry commercial. Meanwhile, Black Bathing Suit has so many different ideas, but absolutely no idea how to bring them or weave them together. The tedious intro doesn't really link all that effectively to the verses that just kind of sound like a knockoff of Nick Cave's Where the Wild Roses Grow. Then that stumbles into a horrendously sloppy chorus. He said I was bad, let me show you how the bad girls do. Lana just gives us two woozy lead vocals just flopping on top of each other like drunk cold fish. But what's even worse is the song Dealer that features some lead vocals from Miles Kane and uh, vocals from Lana as well, and, and they're something. Like, she's really trying to riff on this track. Get loud, push the volume, really, like, work that range. <laughs> but what ends up happening is just mostly atonal shouting from Lana. I feel like she accidentally made a Yoko Ono track here. And I do generally like some Yoko Ono, but uh, this this is this is no this is no Yoko. Then there's the opener where she tries to work in these mentions of Black Lives Matter into this like a, a love and relationship narrative, which is kind of cringe and just speaks to the unseriousness that's often leveled at uh, allies that don't seem like they're all that invested in these very essential social movements. So there are a lot of blemishes on this record, but some high points as well. The title track is a truly beautiful cut. Arcadia that I talked about earlier has grown on me since I first heard it. Then the other cut with Miles Kane and Alex Turner, Thunder, is actually one of the best songs on the record and sees Lana singing over uh, some vintage pop and soul instrumentation, a backdrop that she sounds better over than I thought she would. She sounds like Dusty Springfield with a Xanax perspective prescription and a vape pen. So look, I like these tracks, but even they are plagued by a larger issue on the record, and that's the vocal performances. Look, Lana's never been my favorite singer. If you've been watching my coverage of her stuff for years, you know that. But I have been listening to her stuff for a while, and I can say in the greater picture of her catalog, 
this is kind of a weak showing for her. Like, she's blatantly out of tune on numerous tracks here, like in, in a way that's totally unignorable. Even on the songs I like from this project, there are very obviously flubbed notes. I guess in a way I appreciate that she wanted a really raw presentation with like no touch-ups or anything like that. A lot of what she's doing sounds like it's done in one take, possibly. Because if she were doing it in pieces, I can't imagine why she wouldn't want to go back and redo some of this stuff or, you know, like uh, adjust a few notes here and there. Because she is flat and sharp in just about every pocket of this album. And sometimes the instrumentals come off a little rough too, like the guitar playing on Nectar of the Gods is not slick. A lot of this LP feels like Lana just put out a first draft and, and that's it. And sure, it may be exciting for some hardcores to hear Lana in this supremely unedited state. In a way, it clearly shows she's past the point of giving a shit about whether or not her music uh, appeals outside of her fan base. Which I think can be great if you have the ambition to try something new, break the mold a little bit. But the execution still has to be there, and I feel like Lana and her collaborators didn't really put in the work here to smooth over the finer details that she more or less nailed on her past two records. Which ultimately just leaves Blue Bannisters sounding more slapped together than it should because some of the writing and song ideas at the core of these tracks are pretty good. They're just not pulled off very well. I'm feeling a light five on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? Over here next to my head, it's another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Lana Del Rey, forever.